Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to make this mixed media bucket. We are going to apply modeling paste to a curved surface. So here's the bucket. I got this end of season at Michael's 80% discount. It had writing on it. I put a couple layers of Kills 2 which primes it and gets it ready to take any kind of paint. I've had a lot of success and that's been thoroughly dried. So this Lily Pond stencil from the Crafters Workshop, I adore, but I wanna put it on this bucket with modeling paste. So how do you do that? It's hard enough to put modeling paste on a flat surface, forget a curved or irregular surface or canvas even. Here's the solution. Do the modeling paste through the stencil on a flat surface onto tissue paper. That's right, regular dollar store cheap tissue paper. I put the doll side up and the shiny side down and I'm using TCW modeling paste, which is the one I have the most success with. You're gonna, if you're going to do multiple panels, you kind of check underneath to make sure there's no seepage or excess because that's gonna distort your stenciling. So here I'm doing multiple panels. I'm doing a stash builder time. I'm doing lots of these. This one's with just the TCW white modeling paste. And then I'm doing the same with TCW white pearl stencil butter. This has an iridescent quality and I wasn't sure which one I'm going to do. Now, this one is not on tissue paper. This is on the excess ply of napkin. You know, the excess plies you pull off when you decoupage and you should throw those away? Keep them. Here is a perfect use for them. Now, the napkin will get a little bit, when it gets wet, it gets a little bit more fragile, so you have to be a little extra careful, but it works well. So, let's take this. Now here it went under and kind of seeped under the stencil. When you do that and it's on tissue paper, you can cut that part out if you wish. And you can also play with it, mix and match from different stencils and build your composition. So I'm going to water cut this out. Now when I do with water cut napkins, I use my very fine liner brush and very little water. With tissue paper, I use more water and I'm using a thicker brush. I just find it works better. The tissue paper is a little tougher. So I am going right next to where I, right next to the modeling paste. Now, all I want is the lily pad. I don't want those waves in the water for my purposes. So I'm cutting those out. Now I could be very selective. I don't have to use the whole panel of this. I could bring in other elements from other stencils if I wanted to. FYI, if you want to just stencil onto a curved surface, you could stencil onto the tissue paper or onto napkin and do that. And I'll put a link to a video where I do just that. This technique of making these modeling paste embellishments works really well when you want to put texture paste or modeling paste on canvases. You know how canvases give and it's really hard to get a good, um, modeling paste, put it through without making a mess? This is the answer. So I'm just going to work my way around and I've sped up a lot of this video. I water cut at least two of the panels and I do the dragonflies from the, um, out of the napkin 
that I used the white pearl stencil butter. So those are cut out my, so now I'm ready to paint my background. And I'm using Prussian blue, light blue permanent, and Naples yellow. And I want to have it darker at the bottom, so that's kind of water, and then lighter as I go up into the sky. This is just the backdrop for the lily pads. I'm working in a section. I'm just doing, you know, basically a third of the can. I start with putting, using a makeup sponge, then I use my brush. I love that it, there are marks there. In fact, I'm liking kind of when I'm using the brush roughly, it's leaving some texture and it's building interest into my background. What I don't want is a plain, flat, one-tone background. That's just too boring for me. Now my brush here is getting a little bit too blended up, so I'm cleaning it out and adding more white gesso just to get a little bit of that lighter blue. But you can see I've got lots of variation, lots of interest on here. And I want, I don't want a hard edge between the darkest part and the lightest part. So that's why I'm doing wet on wet. And I'm working fairly quickly, although not as fast as what you see in the video. So right about here, I get the idea of taking some saran wrap or plastic wrap and putting it on. That gives it a crinkled effect and it's a lovely texture element to add and so very easy. So I go around and I'm putting that on, but of course part of my can has already dried, so I have to put more paint on to get it to work. I piggyback off that idea and I'm using the saran wrap as a stamp and I'm getting another additional patterning to the background and I love the effect of this so while my background is plain because it's no stenciling or collage papers or anything that typically you'd have in an art journal page I've built a lot of interest into the background and this was a lot of fun to paint this can. So here I'm using the Naples yellow with the saran wrap stamp. Mark makers don't have to be expensive. Then I'm paint the rim of that, but I don't sh continue to show you this because, well, it's a little awkward to see. So now I'm ready to glue the modeling paste tissue paper embellishments on, and I'm using a healthy amount of fluid matte medium. I use the Liquitex brand, it's what I have success with, and I put it underneath and then on top. And then I'm taking the brush and kind of dabbing down and pushing it down to make sure there's good adhesion and the low points where there is no modeling paste are flat to the surface. If you, you do it on a napkin, just be advised the napkin will be a whole lot more fragile. So it may rip. Now I'm painting out the lily with a coat of just a wash of white gesso. 
Now I could have left it with just the modeling paste outline. And actually, I really like that. But, you know, in my mind, I thought my first instinct was to paint this a color. So that's where I'm going to go. But I could have left it with just the modeling paste outline. I could have left it with just the white here. So you have options and you can say, which one do I like best? And then that's what you can do. From my videos, take what makes sense to you, take what you like and use that. There's nothing saying you have to follow every step that I do. I apologize that this is partially off camera. It's really hard to film something round like this. And some, sometimes I'm just so focused on doing the painting that I forget to check the viewfinder and see what I'm actually getting. So I'm going to add the rest of the embellishments on here and work my way around. And as you'll notice, I'm not doing a full layout of this one. I've cut portions of it and I'm going to make sure that it fits in the space that I have. So I do end up putting another lily pad, a lily in there. So now I want to color the lily pad and I'm using a combination of Naples yellow, yellow green and hookers green. And I'm dabbing it, getting all that on my paintbrush and just dabbing it. So it's very modeled looking. And again, it's not flat. And you've got lots of variations. Some are lighter, some are darker. I do shade these later as well with some Prussian blue and some black to just add a little bit more detail, but I've built in a lot of the variation and I just love how the lily pad, lily, the lily pad looked, the green part. Now with this video, I'm not showing you all of me painting the lily pad or all of me painting the lilies. I'm showing you enough of each step. To do everything would take a long time. So as I said, I'm going to colorize the lilies and I've chosen to do that with quinacridone magenta, Prussian blue to tie into the background and white. So the first step here is to give it a base coat of the quinacridone magenta and a little bit of white just to build some variation in tone. And I'm going over top of the modeling paste and the areas in between. I'm going for a painterly type of effect. Kind of more abstract look. While the magenta is still wet, I'm coming in with some of the Prussian blue. And I'm targeting mainly where the lines of the texture paste is. This is just adding the shading to the flower. Now I spend a lot of time painting these lilies and playing with the colors and until I get what I like. And that's what you need to know when you try something like this. Just keep playing with the colors. If you don't like it, you can let it dry, put a coat of gesso and continue. So the Prussian blue is going on when the magenta is still wet for the most part. And then for best results, I'm doing the shading with the white when it's dry. Because I don't want that to be light pink. I want to preserve that. I want that to be more opaque white.
So I work my way around the bucket one flower at a time. Base coat, Prussian blue, white. And just keep tweaking it until, you know, till you like it. If it gets too blendy, take the time to dry it. Now, just a word about drying it. This is a metal can, so it gets hot. So be warned. Now, I wish I had left this where it is, but I decided to try something and I ended up not liking it, so, but maybe you'll like it. I left it in to show that, you know, try something, experiment. Here I'm just adding a little bit of gold to each of the lilies. I thought that the gold would work well with the Naples yellow that was in the background. And I didn't hate it, but I did not love it. So I end up going back and painting over it with another coat of the quinacridone magenta and the Prussian blue. And then I do a different treatment to bring out the white. So now you have even more options. And if you like the gold, go with it. Now, if I had left it white, and just did the gold. That might have looked really good. Ooh. So now that the lilies are all done, I am going to glue down the dragonflies. I taped them on a little bit just to get the positioning. And I'm gluing them down with my fluid matte medium, just like I did the lily pad. This was, these were this modeling paste, it was the stencil butter, white pearl stencil butter on the napkin. I didn't notice till now that there were two different dragonflies. They have different wings. I would have maybe alternated them or done something else, but I wasn't even aware until I started painting them out. Making sure there's a good coat of the matte medium on top. And then I decide I'm just gonna bend the body, the tail end of the dragonflies, just to add a little variation. So while that's drying, I am shading with Prussian blue and a little bit of black around the lilies. I'd also shade on the lily pad with the Prussian blue, but I did not get any of that on camera. This just makes the lily stand off from the background a little bit. So the dragonfly, I decided I'm going to paint the interior of the wings. And to do that, I'm using my ink tense blocks because it's more translucent than paint. And I didn't want, I didn't want to lose any of the texture. So I'm just wetting my brush, rubbing it on my ink tense block and painting inside not on top of the modeling paste. And I'm using my liner brush to do that. Now, ink tense blocks, if you're not familiar, 
they are ink, not watercolor, although they act very similar and that they're water activated like watercolor, but they are permanent when dry. Now see this one and how lovely iridescent he is? Well, to get that, I'm using iridescent medium. This one's from Artist Loft, works perfectly fine for my purposes. And all I'm doing is once I've colored the dragonflies, I'm putting a coat of this on. Now it goes on very cloudy. It dries a little more clear, but then you get that beautiful iridescent quality. And I wanted that for the dragonflies. I wanted to, to bring it out. You don't really get to see it so much on camera, but in real life, it just adds that little extra something special. I love dragonflies, so this dragonfly I will be using. I think these are just adorable. They're going to find their way on many, many pages. So here I've repainted the lilies, given them a coat of Prussian blue and the magenta. And now I'm taking a makeup sponge and just lightly rubbing on top of the high points. And I'm just, I've made a splotch there. So you're going to see me come in with a baby wipe and wipe that off. I'll give it a little bit of coat with the magenta paint. So this was another possibility. So I've given you lots of options for ways of painting the lilies or not painting the lilies as you see fit. Then I decide I'm going to introduce some of that magenta paint into the top of the bucket by splattering it. At the end of the video, I've got close-ups of this finished project. I hope you give modeling paste embellishments, tissue paper embellishments, a try. It's a great technique with great usability. Give me a thumbs up, ask me a question, leave me a comment. Until next time, go get creative.